All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the August 11, uh, 2021 Chaos uh, DEI meeting. So the minutes are in the chat. If you could add yourself, that would be great. I will add myself here. And how you're feeling or something that's going on for you. All right, yeah, so apparently it's a mad day. Maybe we can, <laughs> nobody's really feeling it today. <laughs> that happens. All right, um, well, let's, let's get in. I will share my screen. Um, so we have a, a few things today. Um, so we have a couple metrics and I think Matt Cantu, if I'm right, like event location inclusivity, we're gonna try to get that one wrapped up today. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Right. So why don't we first go ahead and take a look at attention to color blindness. So that's the first one here. It's so tidy. It's a simple link. Maybe. There we go. And then I also saw Elizabeth, you were working on some metrics today too. Did, are they in the minutes? Uh, yeah, um, they are. Uh, I put the psychological safety in PR. So it's ready. Okay. It's done. Gotcha. That was awesome. Cool. cool. All right. So attention to colorblindness. Um, let's see. Do you remember who was kind of leading this metric? I think Nico was, if I had to guess. Oh, that's right. Okay. So maybe somebody's typing the sheep. That would be Matt. Could we take just a second and, and look at this? I think the general um, premise of this metric is at the community level, is that right? Just kind of reading through here. Just kind of blindness to turn in. Yeah. Okay. It seemed like there might be parts of it that we would want. I don't I don't know um, if we want to do this, but that relates specifically to events with regard to like slides and things like that. Um, so I don't know if that's like a piece that goes with events or if it stays in the color blindness. We have this here. Do you see that in filters? Yeah, I didn't know if we wanted to like, because that piece is just a little different, you know, than the rest. So okay. I didn't, I wasn't sure if like that should be a separate metric of its own in the events focus area or not. I or think we talked about this last week. And okay. We the decision was to not do that for the time being and just okay, okay. and then we had these different filters so one was like promotional materials document stuff website stuff you know what i mean and events is just one of them okay perfect thank you okay um so i think the top is looking pretty good Thank you, Matt, for adding stuff, despite the meh day. As you you know, I think it, this might be a different topic entirely, but I think a uh, person first language could be a could be a focus of developing DEI metrics as well, because we deal with a lot of things such as disabilities or differences between people. And did you um, give me an example of what you mean? So, like. This is a this is an extreme example, but that person is uh, let's say that person is homeless, or or you would say that person is experiencing homelessness or something like that. That might not be the best example, but because it's not too super relevant here. But uh, so the colorblind would be the non version, and then like you'd say, individuals experiencing colorblindness because it it's not necessarily their identity as much as it is something that they 
experience. I learned this one from a social work 1000 class and I've kind of, it's kind of stuck with me because it makes a lot of sense. So would it change like the, would it change, for example, would it change the title here? Um, a person first focus, is that what you Yeah, mean? yeah. I, I can go through and do a pass and, and just kind of do that now. Um, this is kind of an interesting topic. I uh, actually just was talking about this in one of my classes. Uh, person first language, like you're saying, like puts the identity of the person first before like um, if they have a disability, for example. Um, and so colorblindness might be seen as that. Um, one thing that was also interesting, and this is why I think like this community discussion part is important um, and maybe paying attention to how people communicate about themselves. Um, but there were arguments going the other way as well by saying, like when you list the disability, whatever that is first before the person, it tends to kind of spin it on its head and say like, well, this is a societal problem, not the person's fault. Um, so it kind of, it shifts blame, air quotes around that, um, to saying like, I am disabled because of society's expectations, not because of my own fault. Um, so that might just be something that we could discuss kind of in a larger setting, um, but wanted to kind of at least toss that, th there's an alternative perspective to that as well out there. Definitely. So in this case, Lauren, like, can you see my screen? Like what Matt has been adding, like attention to individuals experiencing colorblindness. Mm -hmm. Would there be, what would be the, an example of like what you had just described as the yeah. alternative perspective? So it, it's basically like swapping that colorblindness word with the word individual. So attention to colorblind individuals um, would be the, the non-person first version of that um in a way okay what are people's thoughts i just jotted down lauren's suggestion there and lauren were, were both of these were both of the approaches like looked at in your discussion as positive steps forward it were depends they... on the community um and so that's why i was kind of curious to see what other people thought um, personally, I tend to sway towards person first language. Like this one. Out. Yeah. Okay. Um, individuals experiencing colorblindness. Um, but wanted to at least acknowledge that it's not always what uh, people within those communities prefer to say about themselves. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with that. I think there's a lot of perspectives, um, different perspectives that call for different ways of measuring it. So, like you, you can say like holistically, like colorblindness within the community. You can say colorblind individuals to say to, to talk about first what their uh, what what the subject of this is, and then I, I think the individuals experiencing part that I was bringing up um, lays more in the spot of like the, we're talking about the person. Uh, or, or we're talking, or, or rather, we're talking about the disability that the person's experienced. There's a lot of ways to do it. <laughs> we, yeah. Does this, so Matt and Lauren, I mean, is this an issue of inclusive language in the metrics? Yeah, it could probably be viewed as that. Okay. Um, I don't know that there's a hard and fast answer. Okay, sure. <laughs> also, thank you, Lauren, for providing that extra, per like that other perspective, because I know that the individual's experience, it doesn't necessarily, it's not a catch-all, yeah. So uh, the other perspective is nice too. Maybe if I, I, yeah. if I put an opinion out there, I think given that we work so often around data and metrics and trying to quantify things that, can be really difficult to quant, well, not always quantify, but tracking these kinds of topics. I like the approach of centering people first in our, our way of doing this, just because so much of what our work does impacts how other people classify. And uh, I don't know, but maybe it's more, maybe I'm overthinking it, but I just see that, I don't know, I, I like the approach since we are such a, a data oriented or, or, or me measuring metrics oriented kind of community. I like to center the people the human centered piece there. Okay. Just by the nature of our work. Okay. Okay. 
That's good. Um, any other thoughts on this? So that would, Justin, that would lead to the top, your preference towards this one, the one that's highlighted right now. That's right. Okay. Um, well, I, I think this is a good conversation. I really do appreciate you bringing this up, Lauren. Um, this is, it's all new to me. So it's a good learning experience. Yeah, I try to provide like a couple links to articles if that's interesting. But yeah, I definitely agree. <laughs> I, I yeah. think the individual in our case is probably the best approach. Can you, did you, do you have links to those articles? Uh, yeah, not handy, but I can get them. Could you put them here in the agenda? So like we could have an item which is like discussion. Yep, for sure. About, you know, person firstness. Yep, totally. Great, thank you. Um, all right, great. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Kevin. Any other comments here? Um, I wasn't sure. I added a couple of um, colorblind simulators and like checks that you, you know, tools that will check your website and tell you. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that actually, if that provides the metric. I mean, it kind of does. Like it would show you where, you know, but it would just be on your website. What about? um like implementation maybe you could say some tools like here we yeah. get some tools that help simulate colorblindness yeah the Such use a, the usage of tools like that shows an attentiveness to individuals experiencing colorblindness yeah so the, the usage of those tools could actually be a something that's measured or a metric. So where, Kevin, where did you think they would stay here? Uh, where is it at? I'm sorry. Right now it's under tools providing the metric. Uh, no, I, I don't think it's tools providing the metric. I think it is. Uh, um, I had suggested implementation. Yeah, I, I like implementation. Okay. So then this is, the, I think this is at the heart of visualizations personally, because, because you're looking at it and it provides information on the topic. That could, yep. Typically, I think of visualizations as kind of visuals of the metric. That's how we use it in the past. Uh, makes sense. So Elizabeth, could you maybe just add a sentence under implementation that says that, you know, tools that can help kind of, I don't remember what Kevin said, but something like what Kevin said, <laughs> the usage. Oh, Kevin's adding it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. And then these could be in that sentence. And then we could just add them as references down here. You know what I mean? OK. So I'm going to get rid of this as well. So. Okay. And then I guess towards the end here, we have Matt, you added a Likert scale or an emoji scale as a possibility of surveying it. I was just dropping that in because we have that in most of our metrics okay. where we survey the community and it was a way to get the conversation started on it. 
Gotcha. Okay. Um, trying to think like, would the questions be something along the lines of like as a community member, I feel that the community is attentive to to individuals experiencing color blindness. Like, could it be that simple? Okay. Um, what did I say? <laughs> uh, My community is attentive to, or the community is attentive to people individually to individuals experiencing colorblindness. Any other questions that um, you think might be good in this regard that would draw this forward? Would a, would a data collection strategy be the report that comes from running your website through one of those audits? Like if it's, you know, like is, is that collecting data around, uh, like if it passes 100% and everything should be okay for everybody, like would that be considered a, a way Probably. to collect data? Yeah, I was, that's a good point. So the usage of tools to show attentiveness to individuals experiencing colorblindness that identify potential areas such as. Um, so like maybe this instead of in implementation could be in data collection strategies. And we, it, it's a little more concrete than just, you know, how people feel because like, I, yeah. I think like I'm not colorblind, so I don't, really know the answer to mm -hmm. if the community is unless they've explicitly said so i don't i don't know i don't know we could have it in both places you know what i mean so use tools um and then like another could be like um uh reports sticking out loud here generated from are they called like colorblind simulator tools or? Yeah, I think that would be a fair categorization of them, yeah. Sorry, I got kicked out of Zoom and uh, Google Doc for some reason. So I'm back now. If, you, we'll if anyone was talking to me, you were so for the whole time. Yeah, the whole time. I, as I expect, yeah. when I'm not around, I assume you all just talk about me or. Uh, well, Kevin's gone quick. Everybody say something about Kevin. <laughs> all right. Uh, what What is the. Real, real quick, what is the purpose of the implementation section as, as we understand it? In like the, uh, broadly? Yeah. Well, we might have to go look at other. So is that about, is that about measuring? Well, actually, yeah. I mean, so like a lot of this, we could just, so just looking at the headers, you know what I mean? Like clearly filters as part of implementation as is visualizations, tools, and data collection strategies. You know so what I mean? those, those first two bullets in implementation yep. are general advice to, to use colorblind uh, best practices. But is that actually, is that, does that actually belong in implementation? So is, is implementation about how we would measure our metric and how we can understand the metric or, or is implementation, is it supposed to uh, provide guidance in this fashion? So I'm wondering if those two top bullet points actually fit better with the objectives rather than implementation. 
Right, I was wondering that too, listening to you talk, that these two would move up into objectives and this one could essentially just live in data collection strategies. And even as a, even at a high level in implementation, because data collection strategies is part of it's part of implementation. It's part of implementation. So yeah. at, a, at a high level, we can say, hey, usage of these tools uh, shows an attentiveness to, right. to it. And then when we get down to the data collection, we could provide a more specific example of, uh, of measuring usage of those tools or, right. or even you know, uh, using the tools to determine if if someone is following colorblind best practices. So, so perhaps there's two things we could look at. Are they following best practices? And we could use tools to figure that out. But the usage of the tools by the community themselves is also an indicator that they are following the best practices here. Gotcha. So then improve to Color. Right. This would be an objective. To making distinctions with color. So um, you know, got me thinking too. The description is kind of also a um, stands out in this case as well, because normally I see the description as like a. If I'm not wrong, I see the description as a paragraph, and this also looks like objectives. We might just have a lot of objectives. It's okay. Yeah, so the dis yeah, right. So the description is is meant to be like um, by attending to individuals experiencing colorblindness, you can create a more inclusive community. You know what I mean? Like creating an environment where yeah, I think those should so then the description is um, I always thought of the description as an elevator pitch. Yeah, and I mean it can be short too, right? I mean some some of our metrics are. I think this one in particular is kind of self descriptive in the title. Um, attention to oh, sorry. You know what? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Stop it. Is that, is this more what you're thinking, Matt? In terms yeah, of this is closer, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I have a quick question. Assuming that you know the majority of people who are using our metrics are open source project maintainers, do we need to uh, include something about like their own software? Like if the software is producing visuals, if the software is producing graphs or or any kind of anything with color in it, would, yeah, uh, you wanna... would that fit here too? We have this. Oh, and I'm sorry, it's right there in front of me. I'm sorry, I read right over it. 
So yes, let's include that. What a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are people's thoughts so far on this, this metric? I think maybe at this point, like with these really excellent additions, it could probably use like a cleanup for next week is what I'm thinking. And uh, we still have time on the metrics release. So we have till the end of the month. Correct, Kevin? Correct. Okay. Take as much time as you need. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So I will work on this. So I'll give myself an action item so we can move on. Well, thank you for adding those, Lauren. Yep. Yeah, this might, is anybody else's Google Doc really slow? It is. I, I, I got kicked actually, out. I was wondering if it might help to archive, like put yeah. some of the 18, 19, 20 notes into a new document for archive. So that way this one isn't so, so heavy. Burdensome. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been frozen for me for like five minutes too. <laughs> okay, that's okay. So that's a that's an affirmative then <laughs> um matt can too have you done this before you've archived haven't you i did it with john l <clears throat> he has the tooling but i'll i'll take an action item to reach out to him and get that to figure out what he used okay because he, he had some like i tried a bunch of stuff and he had some kind of magical tool that was free and i can't find it now <laughs> so magic tools all right cool <laughs> So I'll, I'll, I'll write in that action item. Thank you for, for doing that. Um, so can we hop to Elizabeth's psychological safety? We have 20 minutes left. And I, you may say just you're done. I mean, that could be the extent of, of the comment here, but nonetheless. So you'd mostly just got this in as a PR? Yeah. Okay. Is there any, did you have any questions or anything like that? Like you're just looking for a merge at this point? I think so. Um, I mean, if someone wants to look at like the way, cause those, the questions were kind of formatted weird in the Google doc. I don't know if you remember, if anyone remembers, but I tried to clean yeah. that a lot and make it a little clearer. So if someone wants to just, you know, give a quick look yeah. at it. Sure, it makes sense. That'd be great. great. Um, did you? So once it's merged, do we have it as a metric here? Psychological. Okay, so you updated that. And I updated the spreadsheet too. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, right on. Okay, so so that's that was more just a note. Yeah, just because I mean, it had been an action item like three weeks ago. So I just want to kind of bring closure to that. Okay, great. Um, and then the, I guess the other thing that we should do like with the translations is once that's merged, once merged, we um, add an issue, what was that word? Stop. <laughs> I like, can't type very fast. <laughs> and then like it goes, like it all just comes out at once. <laughs> and an issue to the. I just looked at the doc. It is 188 pages currently. Ugh. I think that might be the problem. Trans. It's like typing. Like, have you ever like been in a video where there's like a tiny delay? on yourself and you can see that delay on yourself you know what i'm talking about like your eyes don't like you look at it and your eyes kind of catch up with 
your eye, you know, your eyes are already looking at the camera, but you can see your eyes catching up to the camera. That's like what I feel like right now, typing. Um, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I had, so you would add an issue to the translations repo and you'll see some in there you'll you can see some um, like examples of just how to header it and all that kind of stuff it's pretty pretty straightforward and i think there's a couple that are still open and if not just check out the closed issues okay thank you yeah cool um all right so event location inclusivity i'd like to take a look at this i feel like we're really close on a few metrics here so that's that's really nice um this was the one that has been worked on over summer um, by Trisha and Matt. Matt, was there was there anything here that did you feel like we need to talk about? Uh, I just I just put this one together. Oh, never mind. So, yeah, it hasn't been worked on at all. Oh, uh, what okay. we see here is just what I did the other day. Oh, okay. I retract all the things that I said. Okay. Yeah, you were scaring me. I was like, "Wait, did we work on this one?" <laughs> hey, Matt. So, this one is this one is at the early stages, uh, and the work that I've done on it so far is to try to distinguish it from some of the other uh, conversations we've had because we we started getting into. Uh, accessibility conversations and so the the where this metric is at I think I've I've scoped it so that it's very specifically about event location in relation to uh, discriminatory practices uh, by government agencies okay And can someone remind me, I know we had talked about like specific things with regards to venues, um, like for instance, like gender neutral bathrooms. Is that, did we decide to put that in a separate metric? Does anyone that, is different. This yeah. is, that is this different. This is the metric. one that, that Kevin was going to start with this one about geographic location. And then I was going to take on the one after to work on the more specific about venue accessibility. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Like the two part strategy to try to unpack this like bigger piece on events and location. Got you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. So, okay, so this is event location. So this is really about how inclusive is the location of the event. The geographic location. Yeah. Okay. And most often that is going to be uh, shown through some sort of local government restrictions or legislation that's discriminatory. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, however, I, I think it could also be visible in uh, uh, not just uh, government restrictions, but it could also be uh, a cultural a cultural issue where uh, certain individuals may not be welcome within that this uh the culture that they're visiting so i should probably say that here in the question governments or cultural context that's nice okay that's good thank you justin no thank you kevin too for starting this do maybe we could just take a few minutes and work on this i know justin was working on it could we all just take like five minutes and help help with kevin on this Right on. I'm going to stop my share. I'm going to pause the recording. 
so Kevin, maybe like do just a bit of cleanup for next week. And then maybe next week we could spend some time connecting, thinking about how these two connect. Because I can still merge the PR, Elizabeth, for psychological safety, even without connecting it here. Because then we have a like that comment, you know, we still have time to improve it. Yeah, make those corrections. So I'd probably still merge this PR, but then we can without that connection. Does that work? Is that okay for you, Kevin? Uh, yeah. Okay. Right on. All right, cool. Slow and steady. That's great. We actually got through three metrics today. Um, and some discussion about first person language. That, that's good. So we got attention to colorblindness. I'm going to be cleaning that up event location inclusivity or whatever it's called right now. Kevin, you're going to kind of clean that up. Psychological safety, that'll be merged. And then we'll start connecting psychological safety with the region, the region metric that we were just working on. Right on. Cool. All right, everybody. That was great. Um, it's good to see everybody. Have a wonderful day, whatever you're doing. And we'll see you around. That's crazy. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.